Hey, it's Horner, and this is 2004, Form B. Uh, it's question number one, and it's very similar to the other question that you had with the roller coaster, the other 2004 Form A. So this car goes down the hill, but notice it doesn't go all the way down to the ground. Instead, it goes down and comes back up. So it's kind of like the racer, I guess you could say, instead of an inverted coaster. Um, and they want us to figure out what is the speed, so how fast is it moving, at point A. We need to think about uh, potential and kinetic energy here because there is uh, conservation of energy. So we know that this is the original potential and the original kinetic energy. And over here, we'll have our final potential and our final kinetic energy. Oops. Um, so we're going to need to change this to kinetic final. Notice that it does have some speed here, so it does have some potential energy. So this is the first one where you're really going to need to have the entire equation. So here we're going to have MGH original plus one half MV original squared should be equal to MGH final plus one half MV final squared. So we've got our whole equation, and we notice that in our equation we can get rid of the masses. So the masses all cross off because they're all the same. You have to leave the halves in those, so be very, very careful that you don't get rid of those halves. Our equation now, if we um, go back and just look at solving for uh, velocity, we want the velocity at this point, so we're looking for the final velocity. So let's go through and try to solve that. So this is GHO plus one-half of VO squared that's going to be equal to GHF plus one-half VF squared. We need to subtract GHF from the other side, so we're going to do that. So this is G. We're going to do HO minus HF because we can factor out a G plus one-half of VO squared is equal to one-half of VF squared. Let's multiply both sides by two. When we do that, we get 2G times HO minus HF plus VO squared is equal to VF squared. And so uh, now we kind of have our equation that we need, and we can go through and solve so that we can find uh, our correct answer. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. We're going to say VF squared is equal to 2 times 10 times the original height, which was 2 meters, minus the final height, which is 1.9 meters, and then we're going to add to that the 1.5 squared. Uh, once you solve, you should end up with an answer of for VF of 2.1 meters per second. Uh, you'll notice that you do have to do the square root at some point, but uh, I just kind of left that out until this point. So uh, this is worth four points altogether. You get one point for talking about the conservation of energy. You then uh, get one point for um, going through and writing the equation, uh, really getting it down to this point. Um, sorry, down to this point, filling it in as this one, and then getting the right answer with the right unit is that fourth point. So you get four points for doing all that work, so it's well worth it. If we look at part B, part B wants us to draw and label all the forces on the car at point A, so it's at the top of that loop. Um, so we know that going straight down is always our good friend MG, and going straight up is our good friend N, because there is a cart track here. There's a normal force that points up. So you get two points for doing that correctly. The next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, go ahead and solve part C. It says calculate the magnitude of the force on the track at point A. So they really want us to find out what is the normal force. What is the normal force? So at point A, remember the cart track is like this. We've got our car here, and then we've got our two forces. Force going straight down was mg and the force going up is N. And remember that the sum of all the forces should be equal to uh, the mass times the centripetal acceleration because it is going around a curve, so it still has some centripetal acceleration. That's actually equal to mv squared all over the radius of that loop. 
So let's go ahead and put everything in. We're going to say that down is positive, and we're doing that because we know that the centripetal force, which would be the sum of the forces, is going to be going in that direction. So we'll do mg minus n is equal to mv squared all over r. We want to solve this for n, so I'm going to get rid of my r here. Uh, we want to solve this for n, so n is equal to mg minus mv squared all over r. So I basically went through, made the mg negative, flipped it to the other side, that makes it positive, made this positive, and then we have to subtract the mv squared over r. So now we can just go ahead and plug all, all of our numbers in. So m here is 0.5. Uh, let's just use 9.8 just for fun, because uh, we can. If we keep everybody on their toes, 0.5 kilograms is the mass. 4.21 is the speed at that point that we just calculated, and then the radius is 0.95 meters. Now we can go ahead and solve, and we end up with 2.7 newtons, and that would be the force pushing up on the car at that point. For letter D, it says in order to start, stop the car at point A, uh, you've got to have uh, some friction. They want you to calculate the work that must be done by the friction force in order to stop the car at point A. And if we remember, we know that work is basically just the um, work is equal to force times distance, okay? Uh, but we don't have a force or a distance here, so we can't use that equation. How about it's just the change in the energy? So let's think about what is the change in the energy here in order to stop that car at point A. So it's the work due to the friction, and that would be equal to one-half of the mass times the velocity at A squared. So uh, the other thing that we need to do is because it says it's trying to stop the car, we need to know that this is going to need to be negative because we're going to slow it down. Um, and so let's go ahead and plug everything in. So this is negative one-half. Our mass is 0.5 and then it is 4.2 meters per second, and that is squared. And now we have uh, and work due to friction of negative 1.1 joules. They uh, tell me that in this problem you need to have the equation. You need to have the equation filled in. You need to have the answer with the unit, and it's very important that you have the negative sign. So you must have that negative sign or they won't give you this point. Even if your number and your unit is right, if you don't have the negative sign, you only will get two out of three. So that's kind of the problem with it. Finally, uh, the very last part says, explain how to modify the track to cause the car to lose contact with the track at point A before descending down the track, and then they want you to justify your answer. So here we need to, uh, basically if we just decrease so we're going to say decrease the radius of the second hill. Uh, it'll have too much speed and it'll go over that. Uh, the cart will lose contact whenever you have mg minus mva squared over r if it's less than or equal to zero. And remember, this was essentially our notation for uh, if you think about the normal force, okay? So the normal force, remember, is equal to mg minus mva squared all over r, and we know that if the normal force is less than or equal to zero, then that, uh, then that cart will lose contact. Um, and so you've got to have all three things. You need to have this equation. You need to show how it's related to this equation. And because of uh, the two relationships here, then you can come up with this final relationship. So the cart will lose contact basically whenever the normal force is less than or equal to uh, zero. Um, and then it just won't sit on there anymore. And that is the end of 2004, Form B.